Welcome to Naples, Florida. I'm Adam Bazalgette, two-time PGA Teacher of the Year Award winner, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today, great subject, the golf swing of Sergio Garcia. Stay tuned. So recent Masters champion Sergio Garcia, what a great golf swing. We're gonna have a look at that today. And we're gonna flesh it out, not in great, great detail. We'll look at the main pieces, but I'm gonna to try to get some ideas to you as to how much of it you can incorporate. We all love his lag. I'll give you a drill at the end and some thoughts about how to do it. And I'll also give you some ideas, if you're not quite that flexible as we go along, how you can match the amount of lag you can create to your body motion. We'll just have a fun look through this and compare him with a couple of other great, great players that have some similar tendencies. So if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to go to scratchgolfacademy.com, that's my home website. We have full courses in every aspect of the game. Would love to have you check that out. All right, let's take a look at the Masters champ, Sergio Garcia. So there's Sergio. We're going to breeze through a few things. I'm going to try to get some things that you can apply to your game. You may not have quite his body or flexibility, and we'll flesh that out as we go. But we'll have a broad look at his swing and compare it, interestingly, with a couple of other players' swings. And, of course, the thing you always read about and hear about with Sergio is his amazing lag, and it's well worth hearing about. And that would really be defined as the angle between his lead arm and the club shaft. But I like to think of it as the narrowness of his downswing. Look how close to him that club is as he comes down. And that provides tremendous power and tremendous freedom through the shot. Very, very important thing is it's a dynamic lag. That means it's something in motion like a whip. If you look at his backswing there, and we'll have a quick look at his left arm and club, and then you look at his downswing, it's completely different. There's a massive narrowing of that. And when he gets down there, he's not just holding lag. I mean, he's got a ton of lag right there, but he is, watch that right wrist and arm, he snaps those straight and he releases the lag. So it's very whip-like, it's very dynamic. It's not just sort of stiffly holding lag. We're gonna get to that at the end of the video. I'm gonna get in front of the camera and give you some ideas as to how you can get at least some of that into your golf swing. And uh, it'd be interesting to see. Now let's have a look at a, very, a guy he's compared with occasionally, or at least I think he could be, Ben Hogan. Wouldn't we all like to be compared with Ben Hogan when it comes to striking the ball? Let's look at the down the line view and you see something kind of interesting here, I think. If we look at uh, Sergio, let's get him into his downswing. Now Hogan looks like he's just hitting like a three quarter wedge getting warmed up in this one. I don't know for certain, but he had a fairly compact swing, but not quite that short. But let's look at how similar, look at the left arm and club there, look at the hips. And especially, look as they get down near impact. Let's put him right before he hits the ball. And we'll do the same with Sergio. And it is pretty unusual, even with the greatest players in the world, to see the arms that much directly underneath the body. If you look at that right forearm, it is literally aimed down the club shaft and almost inside the ball target line. Very difficult to do for most people. But it is a, you can really, really hit the ball straight if you can get that over the ball and your arms that much underneath you. That's another thing I might notice. You'll see Sergio, whatever that sort of maintenance building is in the back. Look at the top of his hat there. Plunges down a little bit. A lot of great players do that. And they get criticized for it. Well, let's say Tiger often gets criticized for it, but a lot of great ball strikers have done that. You'll see Hogan's cap dip down a little bit under that caddy's legs there. So very compact arms right underneath them. Just a great, great look. Let's have another quick look from in front. Right there. And one thing too, when you have that much lag, it keeps the club away from the ground, which makes it easier for the golfer to keep their body nearer the ground. It provides room for you. I just want to show you an interesting little comparison and then we're going to get in front of the camera and just try to give you something here so you can make sure because hey look I love Sergio's swing, I love Hogan's swing. I can't quite do what they can do, certainly not with the level of success they can, but just physically I can't do it. So you've got to match your body motion to what you can do. Now let's have a look at another great lagger of the club for a moment. It'd be Fred Couples and We'll stop him. Let's put him about there. Now, watch Fred. Fred's a little bit older in this video versus where Sergio is there. Both tremendous laggers of the club. Now, watch as we progress into the downswing, though. Watch how different their body motion looks. 
You see how much more side bend Fred has? He's driven his hips more laterally than Sergio, a lot more tilt, and yet very similar look brings Sergio down in the arms. Well, what's the reason for that? Look how much more stacked on upper body is on top of lower body is for Sergio. Well, the fact of the matter is, let's have a quick look here. There's Sergio down the line again, and let's put Fred down the line. This is Fred from a senior tour event here in Naples recently. And uh, you know, we're gonna have a look at that there. Now watch, watch the difference here. Here's Sergio's left arm plane. Look how much more upright Fred is there. He's just a much more upright swinger. His downswing, he certainly slots it pretty well, but his downswing is a lot steeper, a lot nearer his shirt collar than say Sergio. Look how much more across his body Sergio's arm is. And look how much more behind his body Sergio's club shaft as, he's, as he comes in. Probably relative to Fred, it's over here some, somewhere. And uh, when you do that, you, when you do what Fred does, when you're steeper, you've got to tilt back more in order to get the club in a proper hitting position. So let me get outside in front of the camera and see if I can help you for a moment, sort of figure this out for yourself. Then we'll come back and look at Sergio hitting a few drives. So let's have a look at plane here. Now, if you're like Sergio and you can get the club in there, you have to go more down towards the, the target line to get the club in line and get your body more over the club if you're gonna swing up this target line. At the end of the day, that's what counts. Can you deliver the golf club pretty much up the target line right there, approximately matching its shaft plane? So if you're Sergio, if you're here, you've gotta get lower and get down. If you're more Freddy and you're a little higher, you've gotta tilt back a little bit, get your hands a little higher, and you can get it up the target line and you've just got to match this up. I'm kind of in the middle with my flexibility range. So get something like this, use the lines on your carpet, get the club in a slot you think you can get it in, and just see if you can work it down the target line and kind of flesh out this pretty simple geometry for yourself. I'll just say this, if you can't put your arm up in front of you like that, if you can't get your forearm beyond vertical, you're not gonna be flexible enough to do what Sergio does, you'll be a little bit more like Freddy. So let's have a very quick look at his driver as he is one of the literally best drivers in the history of golf and then we'll get back outside and we'll talk about how you can get some of that lag into your game or hopefully I'll do my best and is it any wonder he's such a straight driver if you look at the shaft plane he's literally on that early in his downswing not easy to do even a hair under it but the delivery of that I mean I can get under it but I'd be swinging in this direction to do it. He's not doing that. He's keeping his body angles and what a delivery of the club. Just right down that shaft plane and wham, out she goes. You're gonna hit a lot of quality straight drives if you can do something close to that. Quick look face on. A little something unusual in his backswing, not just peculiar to his driver, but uh, with all his clubs, when I see him hit full shots, he gets a lot of right shoulder turn there, gets well behind him and it kind of gets his right ankle and knee to roll out of it. You don't usually see a really great ball striker with their right foot that rolled out. Doesn't hurt him though. He gets going here, starts his downswing. There's the tremendous lag. And he does something else that a lot of big time laggers of the club do. You might see Dustin Johnson or Tiger Woods do. He'll back away from the target. Watch his head there a little bit as he hits. And I think when you have that much shaft lean, if you don't back up a little bit, you can wind up with a downward hit. So that gives him a nice level hit. As he backs up, it really snaps the wrists out there through it, and it creates a great line through the shot. Pretty centered finish there, but uh, just one of the best drivers in history. So let's get back outside. Okay, so let's conclude here. How are you gonna get some of that lag Maybe not as much as he has, but how are you gonna get some of that lag into your golf swing? All great players do this, and you know what? You can do it a lot better than you think, I'll bet you. When I teach golf, and I'm a full-time golf teacher, I frequently, if the student is here, come around in front of them, kind of grab the front of the shaft, and we hit some little 15, 20 yard chips together. And let me tell you what I feel. It's, a, it's an interesting experience, because you start to feel what they're doing to the golf club. What I feel is tension, you can almost sort of sense the anxiety and poking at the golf ball. That is what prevents you from having lag. And I'm telling you, if you can take a rock, this is a golf ball, and you can at least get two skips on the water on a decent rock, you don't have to get five or six, you know how to lag the golf club. Take this club at the bottom of the metal, and again, all this anxiety and poking at the ball, all this trying to keep lag, just relax and create the kind of motion you do to skip a rock 
and you are going to find you're really, really going to feel this for the first time. You just have to be playful and do it. I like the little image of a paintbrush. If you had the paintbrush dipped in paint and you just had to pop paint all along the grass out there in front of you, you could do it. You could create that pretty easily. Can you do it to the level he does it or to the amount? It depends on your flexibility, etc. But I promise you, if you'll have a little fun, you can really break through with this. So make a couple of little swings, cast a couple of imaginary stones, just relax. And just let the club work for you a little bit. Don't fight it. Don't prioritize solid contact at the beginning. Loosen it up a little bit. And again, try to harness the feeling you'd have in something else like skipping a rock or the imaginary paintbrush thing and you'll get some lag in your golf swing, I promise you. So I hope that helps you with Sergio Garcia. Hope it gives you some things that you can take away, maybe some ideas that you can add into your golf game and hit the ball a little bit better. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Free YouTube videos. Would love to have you go to scratchgolfacademy.com, my home website. Have full courses in all aspects of the game and would love to have you check that out. Thanks again for your interest in my videos.